This is the full tutorial on how to wash and dry your clothes from start to finish. First, put your load of clothes into the washing machine. If your washer is like mine and it doesn't have an agitator sticking up the middle, then it's good to leave some space in the center like I'm doing. Washers without agitators perform better this way. Don't overload the washer with too much. A general rule of thumb is to not load the washer higher than the agitator, or if you don't have an agitator like me, try not to load the washer more than 75% full with your laundry. Put the clothes in there in loose heaps evenly throughout the basket. Do not try to pack your laundry into the washer. It washes better when things can move freely throughout it. Next, you need to add the detergent. This can be confusing depending on the type of washer you have and whether you use liquid detergent or detergent pods. If your washer doesn't have a place to pour liquid detergent, some manufacturers, like on Maytag's website, tell you to pour the detergent into the bottom of the drum before you even add the clothes. While others, like on GE's website, tell you to pour the detergent on top of the clothes after you load them to the washer. If your washer is like mine, you should have a designated spot like this, and you pour the detergent there. And for those of you that don't use liquid detergent and instead use pods, such as these Tide Pods, you should follow the instructions on the container. For example, if I was using these Tide Pods instead, they tell me to put the pods into the bottom of the washer before adding my clothes, no matter what washer I have. I'm not supposed to put the Tide Pods into this drawer like I do with liquid detergent. As far as how much detergent or how many Tide Pods you use, that's easy. It depends on the amount of laundry you're washing. Liquid detergent should have markings on the inside of the cup. Mine has numbers that go from 1 to 5. If my laundry load is small, I'll fill the cup to 1 or 2. If it's a medium sized load, I'll fill the cup up to 3. And for a larger load, I fill it up to four or five. But if I use Tide Pods, I use one pod for small loads, two pods for medium loads, and three pods for large loads. If your washer is HE or high efficiency, which is very normal these days, then your detergent needs to be HE as well. These markings should be easy to find on your washer and detergent bottle. And if you decide to use fabric softener, go ahead and pour it into the designated area of your washer and follow the instructions on the fabric softener container to tell you how much to use. If I was using fabric softener, I would pour it into the labeled slot in this drawer. And for washers that have an agitator that sticks up the middle, there's sometimes a little bowl at the top of the agitator that's labeled for fabric softener. Now that I added the clothes and detergent, I'll close the lid. Now we need to choose our wash cycle and such. And this can look intimidating, but it's not. And as I explain what to do, I'll put a few graphics on the screen from my washer's user manual and manufacturer website so you can pause the video and read if you need more help. I'll go from left to right. This is the soil level, which is mostly based on how dirty your laundry is. 95% of the time, I just leave it on the medium setting because it's the common average setting that's right in the middle. If I was washing a load of really dirty, stinky clothing, I'd use a heavy setting, and for a load such as delicate fabrics, a light setting is usually recommended. Next is the wash temperature, which I normally set to cool or warm for regular loads of laundry. But if you have a unique piece of laundry, refer to the tag that's attached to it for which temperature to use. For example, I have a few shirts that are made of a very weird fabric that are only supposed to have cold water when I wash them, Otherwise, they can be damaged. In the middle is my main cycle selection. Most of the time, for my everyday laundry, I just leave it on the normal setting. But if you'd like a full breakdown of each setting, please pause the video and you can read it. Next, we have extra rinse. You would turn that on if your laundry was super dirty and heavily soiled. This will give everything an extra rinse to try and remove as much dirt as possible. And if you added fabric softener, you would turn the fabric softener dial to on. If you're ever in doubt on what settings to use on a piece of laundry, you can always look at the tag and the manufacturer will tell you what's best. Whether it's a shirt, jeans, bath towel, or bed sheets, they all have washing instructions on their tags. Now we can start the washer. Some washers have a knob that you'll push in or pull out to start it. If yours is like mine, then you just press the start button. 
and on my washer, a light turns on and it'll start sensing. As it goes through the different cycles, the light will move across until it's done. So let the washer do its work and don't remove the clothes until it's finished and completely done and it should tell you when it is done. Now we need to dry the laundry. First you need to have your washed laundry in the dryer. Then put a dryer sheet in with the clothes. Using a dryer sheet is optional. Shut the door. Now you need to select your settings. For normal everyday laundry, I always set the temperature to medium or low if it's a smaller load. Next is the signal sound. I leave mine off, but you can turn yours on if you want your dryer to buzz real loud when it's finished. Then we have wrinkle control. Again, I normally leave this off because I get my clothes out immediately once they're finished, but you can turn it on if you want. And the dryer should periodically spin after it's finished for the set amount of time until you're able to remove your clothes. And it'll do this to try to reduce wrinkles. Now for the main control, my dryer has two different drying options, timed dry and sensor dry. You can use either one. With time dry, you just turn the dial to how many minutes you want the dryer to run for. I normally use sensor dry because it's advertised as being a smarter mode and I put the dial somewhere between more dry and energy preferred and I've always been told to turn this knob clockwise when setting it not to turn it counterclockwise because apparently that can cause issues with some dryers. And before you start the dryer you need to make sure the lint trap is clean so that your dryer can perform better. I recently removed the lint from mine but if you have a bunch of lint just take your hand and pull it off and throw it in the trash. To start the dryer, on some you'll need to push a knob like this, you'll push it in or pull it outwards, or if yours is like mine, there should be a start button that you push like this. And now it's drying my clothes. When it's finished, if your clothes aren't dry enough, you can turn the dial again, but set it for a lower time, and you can open the door and check them periodically until they're dry enough. Each time you open the door, the dryer will stop and to start it again you simply push or pull the button like you originally did. When in doubt on which dryer settings, refer to the drying instructions on the manufacturer's tag on your clothing. If you want to pause the video, here's more info on each setting from my dryer's user manual. Please consider giving the video a like and thank you for watching.